we want to hear you. Blessed be your holy name. Let the meditation of, the, of his heart and the words of his mouth be first acceptable to you and then to all the hearers. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate him as he comes to bring the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. You deserve all praise and adoration. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm excited to be here tonight. Amen. Are you excited to be here today? I tell you, David said, uh, you know, it was wonderful. For when they, I, was, I came running, rather, they said, it, I came running when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I so appreciate being in the house of the Lord today. Thank you so much, Bishop and Mama Bishop. Thank you very much for the privilege and the opportunity that I have to be here today. I just appreciate the leadership team, all the pastors and the ministers in the house. It's just wonderful to be together. We ask that the Lord would minister to us, even as Bishop has already prayed, and we give glory to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please say, give, a, give your neighbor a high five and tell them, these are greetings from Brother John. So let me on my behalf. Hallelujah to God. Oh, thank you, Father. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, to God be the glory. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Even as Bishop mentioned, you know, uh, yesterday we began to speak and to share about some of the key core passions of the house. I just felt really the Lord speak to my heart that he wanted to stir up the heart of the, of the, the, the spirit of the, of the house. You know, some of the core passions, the things that are so dear to this house and, and the things that drive the ministry and, and the work of the Lord in this place. And, and one of the key areas, you know, that um, uh, drives the ministry here is really just a desire and a passion to grow people up. Amen. To raise people, to build people, to develop men and women of God into the fullness of the stature of Christ. And, and just bringing out their greatness. And that's one of what we began to talk about yesterday. Uh, already somebody mentioned just converting potential into the product through process. You know, this is, the, this is really a core area, a core passion in the house. And, and we're talking about how that if God has joined you to this house, then obviously God has an interest in your life. God is interested in bringing out the greatness in your life and building you up. If this is a place where people are built up and raised up and developed and God has planted you here, then obviously he has an intention to develop you and to raise you up and to build you up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And also not only to raise you up, but also to make you a builder, to make you a developer, to make you a grower of people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. And of course, as already Bishop mentioned, one of the key things we learned about uh, growing and becoming great and being developed and be being built up is learning the lesson of taking responsibility with the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. So important that we learn to receive and to uh, uh, handle the responsibilities that are assigned to us with gratitude, with a good attitude, with a, with, a, with a spirit of excellence and to fulfill the duties of our tasks with joy and with excellence in Jesus name. Now, today as I was just waiting before the Lord and just preparing my heart to come, you know, I, 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 I knew that, you know, yesterday as we were praying and just spending time together, you know, the Lord really ministered to my heart. But today as I was just, just you know, open before the Lord, I really felt the Lord put in my heart that there are, there are several categories of people that God wants to raise up in this house. Hallelujah. You are here, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for that anointing that just came into this place right now. I thank you for the power. Lord, we yield ourselves and submit to that anointing and the presence of the Holy Ghost. Father, we just humble ourselves and say, God, do your will, my Father. Have your way in this place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're moving and touching and, and doing supernatural works in the hearts of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. I just felt the Holy Ghost put in my heart that in two months, something supernatural is going to happen here. I don't know what I'm talking about. I absolutely have no clue what I'm saying. But I just sense it in my spirit that in the next couple of months, in two to three months, God is going to do something significant in this house. There's going to be a shift. There's going to be something deep. There's going to be something divine that God's going to deposit in this house. And it shall be seen and it shall be known in the name of Jesus that God has visited the house. You will not miss it. You will not wonder. You will not doubt. You will not, you know, have to look for it. It will be clear. It will be 
obvious will be definite that God has moved into the house and God has done, God has spoken, God has done something divine in the house in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Praise God. Father, we love you and we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you're doing. Hallelujah. I was just sharing about the thing that I sensed today that the Lord was just, uh, you, you know, there are several categories of people that God wants to raise in this house. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, because you're here, God has that um, design and desire for you. There are five categories of people that God wants to raise up in this house. This is a place of building people up. And there are five uh, types of individuals that God wants to build up in this house in the name of Jesus. Category number one is financiers of the gospel. God is going to raise up out of this house. Mm -hmm. God's going to raise up out of this house men and women that will stand in the place of being financiers of the gospel. There are people here that God is going to put money into your hands like never before because God has proven you faithful and God is calling you even to a higher level of faithfulness and a greater level of stewardship that you might be a financier, one that will stand in the gap to deliver and to give and to support the work of God financially like never before. God calls people, they are individuals that God gives the gift of liberality, the ability to be generous, hallelujah, and to give towards the cause of Christ. And so there are, there are people here that God, hallelujah, is going to raise up to become financiers of the gospel. Men, women of God, people who give significantly. Hallelujah. The, for the sake of the gospel giving significant amounts of money for the sake of the gospel that the work of the Lord will not be a burden. You know, the time is coming. The time is nigh. God is about to wrap things up and God must do quickly what he has to do. There must be a quick work happening and the quick work will not have to wait until all the pledges come in, until all the, the you know, the, 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 everything comes in. God, God's going to raise up people who at the, at the snap of a finger can support what needs to be done so the work of God does not experience delay. Hallelujah. And God is going to break off the spirit of delay and, and delayed, delayed accomplishment off of the house because God is going to raise up people, hallelujah, that can break off the financial situation so the work of God can accelerate. So what God wants to do can go forward faster. Hallelujah. Because God is about to raise up men and women that will be able to fulfill that purpose in, his, in the house. Hmm. In the name of Jesus. We're talking about wealth transfer yesterday. How that God is raising up a people, a generation that God is going to transfer wealth to. And I believe that category, there's, there's going to be a people in this house. Glory to God. I feel it strongly that God is going to raise up to be financiers of the gospel. That's the category number one. Second category is teachers of the word. God's putting my heart that the, you know, God is going to raise up people here that have the capacity and the anointing to teach. They have the ability to impart mm, revelation. People that not just speak and talk, and no people just can, just can you know, communicate and share, but people that have an anointing, an unusual capacity and ability from God to impart revelation. Not just that you hear the revelation and you say, oh wow, that was good, but there's an, a capacity that God's going to give several individuals in this house to be able to impart revelation. That once revelation comes, you are able to impart it into the other because there's an anointing for you to do so. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Holy Ghost that the Spirit of God has put upon you an anointing and an ability. Hallelujah. Because he intends to use you to impart revelation to individuals who perhaps have never heard or people who keep hearing and keep hearing and keep hearing but it never seems to enter. But God's going to give you a sharp edge. Hallelujah. That's going to give you like an arrowhead that is able to penetrate the hearts of people, penetrate the minds of people and impart revelation revelation and remove foolishness and remove the, and discard all man of despondency and bring in revelation and insight in the name of Jesus. The second category of people. The third category of people is marriage coaches. <clears throat> God's going to raise up in this house men and women who are able to, pro, to provide counsel for marriages. You don't have to be full time. You don't have to be on staff as a pastor. But you have an ability, an ability and an anointing mm, to be able to impart wisdom and counsel to couples. Whether they are newly married couples, whether they are preparing to be married, or whether they are already you know, hardcore married couples for 30, 60 years, you will be able to have the ability to coach them. God is raising up marriage counselors. And I don't necessarily mean people that have to go out and have an office somewhere, but I'm talking about people in the house 
mm, who will have an anointing and an ability and a recognition from the leadership of the house uh, that they have a special grace. Ah, glory to God. You have a special grace to be able to minister to couples. Uh, and when you minister to couples, uh, there's a way that they draw out of you. They receive from you. It's not anything that you do different from other people. It's not because you're supernaturally or, you know, just you're, you're different in any way. But you have a grace. It's a grace. Mm, that God has given to you that you're able to draw out people have, a, have an affection towards you people like you people like to hear you talk to them people like to hear you get in the middle of their mess whether it be a situation in their marriage whatever it may be hallelujah even the intimate side of their life you are able mm, to speak a word that they receive and work on it and their marriage is saved and their marriage is healed and their marriage is raised up because there's an anointing that God is giving mm fourth category of people that god is raising up god is raising up community liberators people who have a heart for communities people who have a heart for social work among us neighborhoods among us communities in estates glory to god oh mm, hallelujah god is good god is so wonderful god is awesome and god is going to raise people up out of this house people who hallelujah people who have an anointing and a grace for community liberation in other words instead of just reaching one soul god's going to give you the capacity and the grace to be able to offer practical help to communities around about you to where you open that entire neighborhood for the gospel i don't know if you hear the grace of god that is being released upon this house that god is wanting to bring about a, a shift and a change where mm, hallelujah you remember how boaz commanded his his servant to leave handfuls on purpose for ruth i said handfuls on purpose you won't be able to you won't be you won't be one that will be able to just pick up grain by grain but god's gonna give you the ability to pick up a handful by handful hallelujah because you're a community liberator you have an anointing hallelujah to get into a situation into a community where they have a health issue where they have an education issue where they have a you know a a, 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 a sanitation issue and god will give you the grace to be able to bring liberty to that community hallelujah as you engage and practically demonstrate your willingness to connect with their need and bring a solution not only to them but also through them thereby opening their hearts up to you to share the word of god come on somebody's going to be raised up in this house that is a community liberator glory to god microfinance organizations cbo's hallelujah are gonna rise up hallelujah from this house some of you will head them some of you will work in junk in conjunction with them but god's gonna raise ah god's gonna raise a men and women that have an ability glory to god to organize and prepare and to be able to bring jesus in a practical manner to people who would not otherwise turn their eyes to the church but because the help came hallelujah to where they were and it came from the church now they are open to hear what the church has to say and the church is not the building the church is not the, the over there Zimmerman. the church is where you stay the church is you you are the one that god is going to raise up to speak to that community mm. because the grace of god is upon your life and the fifth category of people last but definitely not least is ministers of the gospel ministers pastors preachers evangelists prophets apostles hallelujah god's gonna raise up people glory to god god's gonna raise up people in that category we, we need not to be looked by that that uh, that category too much because we are very familiar with it but i i just sense that god's gonna raise up those five categories of people financiers of the gospel teachers of the word marriage coaches community liberators and ministers of the gospel of jesus christ and because five is the number of grace i just felt it would be good for us to arise and receive the grace for these we, 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 different categories to be raised up that we rise up and say god really i receive that grace hell you know I don't know how many here feel you know you there's a there's a grace there's a nudging of, a, of the holy ghost in your heart to be a financier of the gospel that god has put it in your heart hallelujah wow look at that look at that my god my god thank you father father we just release the grace uh-huh we release the grace <clears throat> lord to receive and rele release uh, to receive and release my father financiers my goodness oh lord thank you my goodness my goodness father thank you for the nudging of the holy ghost thank you for the touch of god that there's a release my father Mm. my god of grace 
let grace come let grace come let grace come my father lord over every individual that has a sensing in their spirit that you are touching them oh god and raising them up to be financiers of the gospel people who will give significant amounts of money millions of kenya shillings and even millions of other currencies lord because of your ability the gift of liberality to go to to to, to release the, the the finances so the gospel can go ahead we release it in jesus name glory to god father we thank you for teachers teachers of the word hallelujah teachers if you feel that grace upon your life or if you feel that desire there's that nudging in your heart just raise up hallelujah your hand in the name of jesus father we thank you that you're releasing the anointing to teach to uh, to impart revelation to impart counsel to impart instruction my god the ability to penetrate the hearts of men the ability to penetrate the minds of people my 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 and to be able to bring the word to cause the word to enter in and bring light Hallelujah. Lord, bringing light, 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 light in the name of Jesus. Light in the name of Jesus. We release light upon these teachers, my Father. Those that sense that stirring in their heart. Lord, we pray that they will be released to enter that function in a manner like never before. Hallelujah. We thank you for those who are sensing this, this tiring in hearts uh, to coach marriages. Oh God, how the family is in so much, uh, Lord, despair and pain. Lord, and such a disarray. Fathers don't know what to do. Mothers don't know what to do. Children are all over the place. We release God an anointing and a grace upon those that sense the stirring of God. Father, for them to be engaged in uh, or ministering to married couples, marriages. My Father, thank you for giving them grace and uh, an anointing and a capacity. My Father, God in the mighty name of jesus to raise up marriages not only in this house but even through this house and many other houses and many other places my father we thank you for the grace in the matchless name of jesus we thank you for community liberators oh god men and women my father have a grace to touch communities entire households entire estates entire uh, families even clans father thank you for people who have who have an anointing hallelujah that you're raising up lord to release the capacity to be community liberators into their lives my father we release the grace we pray for them we pray for them we pray for them touch them feel them today my father by the spirit of god in the mighty name of jesus and we thank you for the every for every minister that you're raising up god ministers of the gospel pastors and teachers and prophets and apostles and evangelists lord thank you that you're raising up men and women of god father that you are anointing to speak hallelujah god you touch jeremiah's mouth you said God that you put up the words of God upon his mouth that he would speak to God and pull up and dismantle and destroy and build up in the name of Jesus we thank you for an action and anointing upon the mouths of your servants to speak with such power such authority God that cannot be gainsaid or opposed hallelujah as you put the coal of fire upon Isaiah's mouth even so we pray my father God that you're putting a coal upon the mouths of your servants to clean up their mouth to clean up their heart to remove iniquity my father and to place an anointing to speak speak and to deliver and to lead and to guide in the precious name of Jesus we receive the grace come on let's just receive the grace let's receive the grace yes Lord we receive the grace my father hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus and we break off limitations doubts and questionings or the inside of the hearts of the people when they begin to ask oh is it me could it be me how can I do it how can I do it father we break off limitations we break off fear we break off doubt and we decree and we declare that the will of the Lord shall be done thy kingdom come thy will be done in our lives as it is in heaven and the whole house shouted yeah. come on I know you can do better than that shouted there you go. Come on, let's give Jesus a shout of praise. Hey! Glory to God. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of God. Thank you, Father. If you have your Bible, please uh, open with me to the book of Acts chapter 20, please. Acts 20. Hallelujah. We left off yesterday we began to talk about some of the key responsibilities of the people that God is raising. Some of the main and the key responsibilities that we must become excellent at if you're going to become great and help others reach their greatness as well. As we talked about the, the importance of uh, staying connected to Jesus, being vitally united with Christ. Hallelujah, that, uh, that we be not pruned off, that we, not, we be not cut off, but rather we be pruned. Hallelujah. 
So one of the key responsibilities we saw is that it is our personal responsibility to maintain a connection with Jesus. It is nobody else's responsibility for us to stay connected with Jesus. We cannot blame anybody. We cannot give any excuse uh, that somebody else did not do their part. Therefore, you know, I'm disconnected from Christ or I'm not as connected to Christ as I can be because, you know, somebody else didn't do their part as they ought to have. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Amen. One as your son. Today, Acts chapter 20. Oh, glory to God. Wow, there's so much. We're going to be going through a number of scriptures today, and I pray the grace of God will facilitate us and help us. But if you go, if you go with me to verse number 17, just for the starters, just for starters, rather, uh, verse 17 from, from Miletus, Paul speaking here, or rather, uh, talking about Paul. From Miletus, he, Paul, sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. Now he called for the elders. Somebody say, he called for the elders. Everything rises and falls on leadership. If the leadership is moving as it ought, then everything is okay. So Paul, rather than call the whole congregation, he called the elders of the church. And so then he, when they had come to him, he said to them, you know from the first day that I came to Asia and what man I lived among you. Okay, and uh, verse 20, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you from house to house and publicly testifying. And, you know, and then he's, he's, he talks about, you know, that uh, he knows he's going to Jerusalem, he's bound in the spirit, and he says no, none of these things move him. Verse 25, it says there, indeed, I, I know, he says this, listen to this. I know that uh, after, uh, I know that, uh, indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I've gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. This is, the, Paul is saying, I know Guys, this is the last time that we are going to be sharing time together with you. You will never, ever again upon the face of the earth, of this earth, see my face again. So you can imagine the soberness of the moment. I mean, he's talking to men that he's raised, men that he's worked with, people that he's developed. And he's telling them, you can rest assured, you will never see my face again. So this is a pretty intense meeting. Because if, if Paul is so clear that this is his last meeting with them, I wonder what is on his heart to tell them. I wonder what Paul, the great apostle, I wonder what is on his heart to say to these elders whom he has worked with for the last several years. And now he knows that he's, gonna, he's never see them again. So verse 26, he says what? Therefore I testify to you this day that I'm innocent of the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. And then he says, therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Now look at verse, verse 32. So now, so after all this is done, he says, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, mm -hmm, which is able to do what? To build you up and give you what? An inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Paul is saying, and of course you can go through the rest of the words there, uh, just for the sake of time, won't read it's an awesome discourse. It would be wonderful for you to read it. It's a powerful uh, you know, testimony of what, uh, you know, as a leader, you, 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 know, you can hope to be able to say one day at the end of your life uh, to those that you've raised and led in the course of your time of ministry. But uh, it says here in verse 32, it says, God, I, I now commend you, brethren, to the, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Now, Paul is saying, I'm, I'm leaving now. And so be careful, watch, be careful, you know, don't do funny things, you know, be careful. And there's a now, therefore, so now, brethren, Paul is saying, I want, to, I want to now finalize my discussion with you, but as I go, here is where I leave you. I won't be there, but I'm leaving you in the safe hands of what? Of God and of his word. Paul is saying, the word of God is able to build you up. To build you up. To build you up. The word of God 
I'm, keep, I'm committing you to the hand of God as well as the word of God, the word of his grace, which is able. The word is able. Somebody said the word is able. The word of God is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in Christ. Some translations say. So Paul is saying, I come to the word of God now. That is amazing. God and his word is what I leave you with. That's important because when you look at that scripture in relation to what God is speaking to this house, the Bible says that God's word is able to build up people. Now keep in mind, this house is a house whose core passion is to build people up. Are we together? Buenas yes. if you Yes. The word of God is able to build you up. And in this house, when you come here, you're going to be built up. You're going to be built up and then you're going to be given the responsibility to build others up with excellence. And so the instrument, glory to God, the instrument that Paul is telling their disciples that they are the elders, the instrument that is useful for building people up is something called the word of God. In other words, if you're a builder, then you better be well familiar with your word of God. If you're a builder, then you must be familiar, you must respond, you must, uh, uh, you know, appreciate the value, you must highly value the word of God. Because the word of God is what you used to build, is what builds you up, is what builds others up. The word. And then he says, that word, I love this, is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified by faith. In other words, yes, you have a calling from God. There's something great that God has called you for. And that thing is your inheritance. There's the, you know, when you were born, when you were birthed, when you were created, God deposited, God ordained and organized an inheritance for you and he put it in your life. There's an inheritance that you have from God. There's a deposit of God in your life that could now refill you now. Yes, I know there's an inheritance in heaven when we go, but there's also an inheritance, something for you to inherit from God that is currently presently in your life. Hallelujah. And Paul says, that word of God is able to build you up and give you that inheritance. Now, before we come back to, this, uh, to, to, to one of these areas, let's look at this. It says here that the word of God is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. That means that inheritance, that greatness that is in you, whether you're a financier of the gospel or you're a teacher or whatever you are, Paul is saying that gift that is in you, that which you are, the thing that you are, the inheritance that you have received as a deposit from God inside of you will be given to you once you've been built up. It's an inheritance for you. If you go through the process with the word, you'll receive, you'll see the fullness of that inheritance. Now, let's, let's, let's go to Galatians 4. Hallelujah. There's a brother there that is really being a wonderful blessing. Galatians 4 verse 1 and 2. If you can just have a quick look at that. Let me just turn to it here as my brother is also finding it in soft version. There we go. It says here in Galatians 4 verse 1. Look at this now. Remember we're talking about receiving an inheritance. Amen? And that inheritance is the thing that you are. What God has made you to be. Who you are in God. The deposit, the product you're supposed to become. That is inheritance. Now, look at this. It says here in Galatians chapter 1. Now I say that, that the heir. Okay? The heir, not the hair. The hair is on your head. But the heir, the heir is the person who inherits. If you look at that word heir, the word inheritance is, is, is just, is, is a, this is just a, you know, a, a root word for that. Now, I say that the heir, look at this, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from who? Hmm. So, hmm, a slave who is in a place or in a house somewhere is an individual that is there to serve that house but has no inheritance in that house. But as long as even the heir is a child, he might have an inheritance, but he cannot access it. Look at verse 2. It says, you know, uh, it says, uh, you know, it does not, now, now I say that the, that heir, if you can go back to verse 1, please. Just for a second. It says there. Yeah, I say that the, the, the heir, as long as he's a child, that, as long as he's a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. He is master of all, but he's a child. So verse 2 says, 
but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by hallelujah there's something God has put in your life there's something God wants to bring out of you there's a greatness, there's that potential in you there's a product that is supposed to come out but as long as you remain a child you will never be able to enter in the fullness of that which God has prepared for you there is a time appointed by the father when you are supposed to enter into the fullness of God, what God has purposed for you. Otherwise, if that wasn't the case, then everybody here would already be fulfilling and walking in the fullness of their purpose. But it's not that way because as long as the heir is a child, he's not different from a slave. His mentality, his attitude, and there's a lesson that we teach. I don't know whether Bishop already has this. It's called sons or servants. Sons or servants. Hmm. 12 characteristics that distinguish that give you the difference between sons and servants. Amazing. You can serve both, both the son and the servant serve, but there's many differences between the two of them. They both work in the same house. Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 3, Moses was faithful as a servant in the house of God, but Christ has come as a son. It's a big difference there. But the point is, there's a time appointed by the father which you, the child, are supposed to receive the inheritance, the deposit that you put in your life. That, but there's a, there's a gap between where you are now and where you're, when you're going to receive that appointment. And that gap is called process. That gap is called growing up. That gap is called being built up. That gap is, that gap is called being developed. Because at this point in time, you're near, no different from a child. And if you're a child, you know what ch children do. If you give children an inheritance, they'll spend it all on sweets. And end up with holes in their teeth. And have nothing left to hand over to their children. And so the father in his wisdom says, Ah, I'll wait. I will not give. I will not give this child access to the inheritance and, until they have grown up. That is why your participation in this house is crucial. Whether you realize it or not, it is crucial. You must grow up. Come on, touch your neighbor. Tell them you must grow up. You must grow up. Pastor Shikuku, you must grow up. Hallelujah. <laughs> you must grow up. Why? Because your possession of the inheritance that God has for you depends on your growing up. Oh, glory to God. So many believers are crying. So many believers are saying, you know, I received a word of prophecy. You know, God spoke to me about ABC. It has been 10 years. It's 15 years. I've not seen it come to pass. Well, have you been doing any growing the last 15 years? Hello? Because everything that God has deposited in you, everything, everything that God was ever going to put into your life, he put it there the moment you are conceived in your mother's womb. That's why he was able, that's why he was able to look through the tunnel of time and tell Jeremiah, by the way, Jeremiah, even before your mom and dad came together, I already knew you. I already appointed you that you're going to be a prophet to the nation. So I already counted and numbered the number, the hairs on your head. I already knew exactly where you could look I knew you were going to be born in a priestly family. Uh, Jeremiah, I knew before you were even in your mother's womb, before even your mom and dad ever had a thought that they are going to have a child. I already knew you. And not only did I know you, I appointed what you are to be. I already designed and designated what you are going to become. Therefore, because I already knew what I put in you, I want you to know that I've also provided everything you require to become that. glory to God. I'm trying to say even for you, it's the same situation. God has already provided every ah, come on church. Come on church. I'm saying God has already provided for you what you're going to need to become all that. Hallelujah. You never have to worry. You never have to ask yourself, do I have, you know, will I be able to make it? You know, it's like a child, you know, being born and the father already knew, I'm going to send this child to XYZ University. The child does not have to come up and start wondering, will there be school fees? Will there be this? What if I don't have money? All of that doesn't matter because the father already took care of it. Because by the time you gave you back, he already had planned that that's what he was going to do in your life. So that, all of those other details are none of your business. Can you grow? Grow up and become everything that God intended for you to become. Glory to God. And so the inheritance is there. It's already been appointed way before the foundations of the earth. Ephesians 1 and verse 4. He says that God already chose us in Christ before the foundations of the earth. 
my, 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 my. If that doesn't excite you, man, hallelujah, I tell you, it excites me. Anyways, God said he already foreordained you. The inheritance you are supposed to be or to have, whatever you are supposed to become. If you are supposed to be president, God already ordained it those days. If you are supposed to be a governor, if you are supposed to be some inventor scientist, if you are supposed to be some kind of a, you know, a, a, a incredible musician and worship leader, whatever your calling might be, if you are supposed to be maybe, you know, a community liberator or whatever, or any of the things we talk about, whatever God ordained for you to be, he already finished that work way back ball is in your court will you grow up and become everything that it, it that is required for you to have that inheritance this inheritance by the way requires grown-ups this inheritance that you're supposed to get requires grown-ups well uh, what i'm trying to say is that it requires you to be a grown-up because in order for you to access it, you have to be a grown-up in accordance with God's standards. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about physically. I'm not talking about age and chronological, you know, counting numbers of, of years. We're talking about spiritual maturity. We're talking about being able to grow up. Hallelujah. And I'm going, getting ahead of myself. But let me, let me, let me, let me not do that. Hmm. Praise God. But that's what God has ordained. That you and I grow up and reach a certain level of maturity and get to a point of, of stature that God can then give us access into that which was actually ours already for ordained from the beginning, kept and, and, and ordained for the time appointed by the Father when the child will no longer be a child, no different from himself, he'll now be a grown-up, he can access what God ordained for him to have. In this house, there are men and women that God is saying, listen, it's time for you to grow up and access what he ordained for you to receive. Come on. Come on. People who've gone to heaven say there's a, there's a room in heaven that's full of body parts. And someone when they say, oh God, why is there all these body parts? Arms and legs and kidneys and... All these things. He says, well, those are all the miracles that I intended for my children to have, but they never ask for them. That's what they say. Now, that's not in the Bible. I'm just telling you it's testimony of people who say they have gone to heaven. Amen. Some of them have good testimonies. Hallelujah. And so, why should your inheritance be part of those things? Wait, 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 wait. Imagine I had an international ministry. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. I hate to idea, Sasa. Now we are not talking international. We are talking galactic or glory to God, universal. Hallelujah. It's important for you and I to grow. Now, listen to this, this scripture here. It says here in, in, a, in, a, in, in a Acts 20, 32, it says, The word of God is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Now, build you up. What does that mean? Build you up means, simply means, to mature you. To bring you to the place of maturity. The goal of being built up is eventually to reach maturity. The whole idea of development is to produce maturity. In fact, what is maturity? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Maturity is simply defined as one's ability to carry responsibility. Amen. Maturity is simply defined as one's ability to carry responsibility. Mm. So when you're talking about you need to grow up, there's a time upon it by the Father, what God is looking at all the time is, hey, are you able to carry some responsibility now? Have you, been able, have you, have you stopped being a child who is expecting people to take care of all their responsibility, including going potty? Hello? If you have not been able to stop uh, needing help to use the bathroom, then you are not able to access some of the things that I've ordained for you. God is saying the word is able to build you up and help you to learn how to carry responsibility. Because when you do that, then eventually you come to the place where you have handled such uh, levels of responsibility that God says, open the vault. Give them the key. They now can access everything, all the treasures that are put in their life. Glory to God. This is the essence of what God is saying. And this is the essence of what God is speaking to this church. This is the essence of what God is saying to us tonight in these revival services. God is talking to us about the ability to carry responsibility. God is saying, grow up. 
Somebody shout, grow up. Come on, say it again, grow up. God wants us to grow up because when we grow up, we will access everything he has purpose and plan for us before the foundation of time. Can somebody say amen to Jesus? Glory to God. God has a plan for you, my brother. But until you can carry responsibility, God will withhold the key to the vault. Because why would he waste it? Maturity. That's the goal of development. Paul says the word is important in bringing maturity, maturity into your life. The word is the key. The Bible, the scriptures, the truth of God's word. It's the key to bringing development in your life. Why? Because Hosea said in chapter 4 verse 6, scripture we all know, that my people perish for lack of. Because without knowledge, without the knowledge of the word of God, you will not be able to, access, to know what you're supposed to carry, what you're not supposed to carry. You don't even know how to carry it, when to carry it. Because the word has all the instructions. This book right here is the instruction manual that God has given to all of us. No matter what area, whether you're a marriage coach, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a, 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 a preacher, whether you're a, a leader, governor, you are, this right here is everything you need. And so the, God, the Bible says, without the word, we perish. Why? Because without the word, we become ignorant. We have no clue what to do. But then secondly, why is the word important? Why is the word important? Why is, why is the word the instrument that God uses? Because without the word, you are susceptible to deception. You see, there is no vacuum in the human mind. If there is no truth, lies will come. There is no, there is no vacuum. If you don't believe the truth, you will believe a lie. And so, God says, get the word. Jesus said this to, to his disciples in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. He said, to the ones who believe in him, he said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall? That means there's a liberty, there's a deliverance that comes from knowing the truth. That presupposes that then therefore you're in bondage because you have not been knowing the truth. There's a degree of bondage in your life and in my life when we don't know the word of God because it's when we know the word of God that we, we find liberty. And those lies bring us into bondage. Whether you're talking about God, whether you're talking about marriage, whether you're talking about children, whether you're talking about, you know, uh, service to people, whether you're talking about giftings, no matter what you talk about, if you don't know the truth about that issue, you will always be susceptible to a lie. And that's what the devil does. The devil simply twists the truth. Did you realize that the devil has nothing original? Everything the devil does is a counterfeit of what God has done. It's a perversion of what God has done. No matter what, the devil did not create anything, but he looks at what God has done, he understands what God, why God did it, how God did it, what God did it for, and then he perverts that. Somebody said, the devil reads his Bible better than most Christians. Because to pervert something so well, you have to understand it very well. And so the word, Paul said, I commit, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. But then thirdly, why is the word important? Because without it, when you despise it, you become foolish. Go with me to Proverbs 1, please. Proverbs chapter 1. Hallelujah. My brother back there is doing such a good job that uh, I'm becoming lazier and lazier to open my Bible. Book of Proverbs chapter 1. And I want us to look at verse 7 quickly. It's a scripture we know very well, but let's just quickly look at uh, Proverbs 1, 7 there. Hallelujah. It says this. It's up here. Oh, okay. He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of? Now, most people say the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. Read your Bible. Actually, there's another scripture that says it's the beginning of wisdom. It's in Proverbs 9. I think it's verse 10 or 11. So, it's okay. Don't worry. Just, just checking. <laughs> but the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Look at this. But what? Read it together. But Wait a minute. I thought fools were ignorant who were empty-headed that didn't know nothing. I thought fools were just who are the fools? Who are the fools? Who are the fools? So the difference between wisdom and foolishness is attitude. The difference between wisdom and foolishness is attitude. Because, just, just keep it up my brother, just keep it up please. You know, it, it's, it's amazing. It says that 
fools despise one another out. So, you can have very knowledgeable fools. Because they have a lot of knowledge which they are despising. The difference between you and wisdom is attitude. <clears throat> That's why he says the fear of the Lord. What is fear of God? It's the reverential awe. It's an attitude towards God and towards his word. It's the attitude. What kind of attitude do you have towards God? What kind of attitude do you have towards the word of God? When, that's why in Isaiah, God says in Isaiah 57, 17, 57, 15, you know, this is the one who will sit together with me in high and lofty places. The one who trembles at my word. That's an attitude of respect and awe and, and reverence. But fools despise knowledge. They, they despise wisdom. Ah, nini. Kwa nini nini? Kwa nini diyo mara kwa jasisi na kuja kupita kivadei. Ati muna sema te kumekuwa na mafuriko hapo. Mafuriko gani? Ni bara gapi? Hii miaka yote nimepita hapa. Kwa nini mafuriko ya jawai kusikia ni napita ikuje? Imekuja leo, sikuile na kuja saa hii. Aha. Fools despise wisdom. You know, when the Lord showed me this scripture, I thought, oh my goodness, Lord, I've been a fool. A preaching fool. Because I despise sometimes the word of God. And not, listen, not just the scriptures, but how many times do you hear the voice of God in your heart and you know it is God? Hello. Muni encourage kido God. Listen, me kuwa wazi kwenu. Hallelujah. Na nyinyi muna kuwanga sometimes unasikia mungu na unajua ni mungu kabisa. Lakini unasema nitafanya, nitafanya ngoja kidogo yetu baadaye, alafu ilienda ikawa ikakuwa mingi. Paka baadaye hujafanya kitu. Na mungu alisha kuongelesha. See, when you don't, when you despise the word, you become a fool and you don't get built up. So you keep delaying the date of your accessing the vault of your inheritance. Because of an attitude of despise. Hmm. God's word says, hallelujah, my brother, you can be looking at Hebrews 5. We'll just go there. I don't know, we may, we may have to finish here. Hebrews 5. <clears throat> hallelujah. Verse 12. God's word is telling us that Paul says, I commend you to the word of his grace because the word of God is able to build you up. Everybody say, the word is able to build me up. Tell yourself, look at your heart and tell your heart, you, you, you my heart. Listen. The word of God is able to build you up so that you're not ignorant so that you're not ignorant you are not deceived and you are not a fool hallelujah the word is what is able to build you up church the word is what is able to build you up the word is able to build you up I love worship, but the Bible doesn't say worship will build you up, worship will bring you close to God so that you can hear his word which can then build you up Hello, praise the Lord. I love to pray, but the Bible doesn't say prayer will build you up. It says the word will build you up. Now the word prayer is important because it clears the atmosphere. Warfare, hallelujah, and clears the heavens. So what? So you can hear the word. Because the word is God's wisdom. No wonder Paul, in all his letters, he prayed and he all the time said, I pray that God will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. That you may know the, 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 all the things that God has prepared for you. Your eyes be flooded. Um, I realize in the writings of Paul, there's no author in the, in the New Testament that talks about wisdom, revelation, understanding, knowledge as often as Paul does. Paul had a revelation of the value of. No wonder he could tell them, I leave you the word. Now, Ah, pray like there's no tomorrow, but remember the word. Worship like Jesus is coming today, and he might. But after you worship, get back in the word. Because the word is able to build you up. Is able to oikodomeo you. Is able to raise you up. This is the word of the Lord for, I believe, these days that we are together. Because this house is a house of building. This is a house that values and cherishes and thrives in building people up and developing people. You are here because you are a candidate for building. Hallelujah. Don't fail. Wanafuzi wa mtiani wanafanya mtiani sahi. 
Kuna wale watapita na kuna wale wataanguka. Na wewe uko kwa hii nyumba, utapita ama utanguka? Umetumwa hapa uweze kujengwa na ujengeke. Kubali kujengeka. Wacha neno likujenge. So how does the word build, the, build us up? Hebrews 5. We might have to finish. <sighs> Hebrews 5 verse 12. Look at this. It says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again. Not to teach you, but to teach you. As in already, you have done nini? Like he says, on a talk at a Arudie. Is a sign of my somia crudi or redo a banner. Bono Tashika Sugani. Munana Adam Wandishwa Neno and Asema Jamani, Japo Kufikia Sasa, Ungeko and Mualimu. By now, you should be a teacher. Like in Sasa, Unaitaji Mualimu, Ted Amam Tumugine, Afunze, Sia Kufunze Mara Kwanza, like in a Kufunze Tena. Nanina la kufunisha tena. The first principles. Ay. Sasa. Afadhali kama likuwa na kufundisha mathematics ya integration form 6. Hiyo afadhali. Lakini na kufundisha 1 plus 1. Tena. Alisha kufundisha 2 plus 2. Lakini huku shika. Sena. Tena. The first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need. You have come. Umefika mahali. Umerudia mazio. Umerudi nyonyo. Nga 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 nga. 37 years of old of age unatafuta mama mami nataka nyonyo you have come to need can imagine mtu amevaa nguo kuna ndefu na kuja na besi mami nataka nyonyo mama atampiga ticket kwenda huko wewe you have come to need the first principle of the oracle of god and you have come to need milk and not sweet food let's go on verse 13 it says there uh, in the in, in verse 13 for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of God, in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Okay, verse 14 says what? Verse 14 says, but solid food or solid meat, in some translations, belongs to those who are of, uh -huh, sounds like maturity, those who are of full age, who, those who by what? By what? By reason of use. Everybody say use. By reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. By reason of what? Come on, church. By reason of? By reason of using. Wale ambao hulitumia neno, wao sasa ndio wamefikia kiwango ambapo, wanaweza kudisan chema ni kipi na kibaya ni kipi. Wamefika umri waki, wakua, u, yani wamekua, wamefikia umri wakua, wame, wame, wame kamilika, wamefikia umri wakukomba. Wamefikia ukomavu. Kwa sababu sasa wako watika hile umri ambao, wanaweza kupitia kwa matumizi ya lile neno, wamefikia kiongo ya kwamba sasa, wanaweza kujua hili ni jema. Hili ni baya. Hili halifai, hili linafaa. Because by reason of use, huwezi kupeleka gari bana katika theoria. Kama unataka kupeleka gari, lazima unge kwenye gari lenyewe, uspige start yenyewe, uvanze kupeleka gari lile gari, na uzimike mara kumina saba, halafu pindue gari 3.10, reverse na kila kitu, heel start, ufanya hizo zote, by reason of using the car, is when you learn how to drive the car. If you don't use the car, you will, you will have all the theory of how a car is driven. You could be wonderful. You can regurgitate and, and reproduce the theoretical knowledge of what it takes to drive a car, but you yourself cannot produce, cannot drive. Because there's no, there's no, there's no use. When there's no use, you, you become of no use also. So why give you access to your inheritance when you are of no use? So if you want to be of use, use the word. Use the word. Ah, use the word. Hallelujah. I wish we had just like five minutes. But our time is gone. Let's honor the time. I want to encourage us. Today. To make a decision. To be users of the word. 
you get the one and you use it. Not you just, James said, don't be hear us only. But be. But he said, you know, when you hear us only, you do what? You deceive yourself. Unajua hakuna deception buyer, kama deception ya deceive mwenyewe. You know why? Because you know what? You trust yourself. Sasa ukijidanganya, una trust ile madanganya umejidanganya naye. Sasa hata mtu hawezi kukusaidia because wewe mwenyewe unajibelieve na umejibelieve kiwongo. Sasa mtu akikuambia ukweli nje uwezi kupokea kwa sababu umeshabelieve uongo ule umejiambia kwa sababu unajiamini. The worst kind of deception is self deception. And the Bible says, when you are a hearer only, you will end up deceiving yourself. Ah, I want to see champions standing up right now as we pray. Come on. Can I see some champions who decide I'm going to use the word? Hallelujah. This is a revival meeting for us to revive ourselves. For the, well, not us to revive ourselves, but the Holy Ghost to, re, to revive our lives. That we can capture something that will stir us up to some degree to where we will go to another level in our life. Glory to God. And God, I keep saying this. This is the word of the Lord that get put in my spirit. This house is a house building. Mahali hapa ni mahali pa kujengwa. Na uko hapa, tafadhali sikia na masikio ya ndani. Uko hapa ujengwe. Hauko hapa kujienjoy ama kuattend kanisa. Kuna kazi nafaa kufanywa na inahitaji watu ambao wamekomaa kwenda kuifanya. Kwa hiyo hukuja hapa kujienjoy, utajienjoy as a by product. Lakini the primary product ni kwamba wewe uvalishwe, utaarishwe, ukue equipped, uwe ume, umejengwa, umeinuliwa, umeraisiwa, umedevelopiwa. Uko na uwezo wa kuchukua some responsibility. Maturity you know sometimes I just feel I think sometimes this is, I think this is how sometimes God feels and he desires it so much for you that he just wishes he could be you but he can't but anakutakia mazuri sana mpaka anaura why what else how nani we fanya saidia huyu this nataka ajue hii yake God so passionately desires for you to end the fullness of what he has purpose for you And I believe there are men and women in this place tonight that hmm, come next year you'll be a different individual. In Jesus' name. Because God is going to dunga your heart with a conviction. I must grow up. I must grow up. Nitawacha kucheza. Kuanzia sasa nitaenda kukua sasa. Lord, I'm going to use the word to grow up. Father, we bless your name. Ah. Oh God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. Your word is so sweet. Your word is so awesome. Father, I pray, even as Paul prayed also, that the word of God will build us up. That God, you, we commend ourselves into your hands and into the word of God, which is able, able, by reason of use, by reason of use, is able, able, able to oikodomeo, to build us up, my Father, to cause us to grow up and to develop in maturity, to develop our limbs and develop our capacity, develop our ability to judge, to discern between good and evil, to develop us so we can be able to receive an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. My Father, I pray for every man and woman here, every boy and girl, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that this night, oh God, something supernatural will happen, something divine will be deposited, a new conviction, a, desire, a dissatisfaction with status quo will be deposited in our hearts and we rise up and say, I'm tearing away from every hindrance, I'm tearing away from the attitude of despise. I'm adopting an attitude of reverence. Reverence for God. Reverence for the word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Father God, today that there is a divine, a divine exchange, Lord. That we are casting aside the attitude of despise and we are picking up the attitude of reverence. The attitude of reverence in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. Can you just, can you just ask God right now to, to help you to do that? Holy Spirit, help me. I discard and set apart the attitude of despise. Father God, the, the despising of the word, the scriptures, to read them even. Lord, help me to just, I, dis, I decide, I make a choice and a decision today that the Holy Ghost will help me to set aside, Lord, the despising attitude and to embrace an attitude of reverence, high regard, great respect for the word of God. Hallelujah to God because I know in so doing, I'll be built up. I'll be built up.
it up. I have an inheritance. I have a destiny. I have a purpose. I have a calling. There's a product I'm supposed to become. And I cannot access it until I grow up. Oh God, help me. I set aside that thief called an attitude of despise. I set aside that thief in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, glory to God. In the precious name of Jesus. You know, I just encourage us. I, we don't have much time. But I want to encourage you. Tonight, just go home. Find somewhere. Useme Mungu. Let us deal with this thing. Just open your scriptures to Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. And pray that scripture into your spirit. Pray it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Pray that verse into your spirit. Pray, you can pray that verse for one hour. Just one verse. Highlight a word from that verse. The fear of God. Oh God, you can pray about the fear of God for 10, 10, 15 minutes over your life. Go to the next word. Pray that scripture. Pray that scripture until it becomes Because he everything. I mean, this, come on. It's something that is within our ability to deal with. If we just grasp it, you know, when, when, when you, you know, that's why the scripture says we wrestle not. Because wrestling means hand to hand combat. It's not missile to missile combat, it's hand to hand. So you can actually grasp a hold of what it is and deal with it. In Jesus' name. As we finish, is there any person here that's not born again? If you're here, you, know, you have an, let me tell you, you have an inheritance. There is something that God has deposited in you that is glorious beyond compare. But you cannot access it without having a relationship with Jesus. And so if you're here and you're not born again, or you're not sure whether you're born again, come on, let's settle that matter tonight in Jesus' name. Is there any such person? Come on, boldly, just raise your hand. I want to be sure today I have a relationship with God. I want to begin my journey to entering the fullness of the inheritance that God has for me. Raise up your hand. We'll pray for you. Any person? Any person? Praise God. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We ask that you cover us with the precious blood. Thank you that you'll raise us up, oh God, as, uh, as we continue to press in. We thank you. We worship you. God, we pray that indeed even the days, in the day to come, the days to come, Lord, you'll keep watching over us and helping us to grow even further and further. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's welcome.